Okay, this is a GRE math prep session, and we're going to deal with symbolism. That's uh, something you'll see on the GRE, symbolism. And this looks a little unusual probably to you because this is probably not something that you had in the math class, I don't think. Um, but it's a way of testing uh, abstract reasoning, not like memorizing something. But it's not at all difficult. In fact, it's probably just something you've seen with a different name. And let's do an example. If, for example, let's just say if uh, A diamond B is equal to the square root of A plus B, What is the value of ten diamond six? Okay. So this is just an ex an ex a sample problem that we'll work through together. A diamond B. If A diamond B is the square root of A plus B, then what would the value of ten diamond six be? Well, this is really just another name for a function. In other words, you have two inputs to the function, and the function does something to them. Um, it's not that complicated at all, except it looks unusual. In other words, 10 diamond 6 is going to be the square root of 10 plus 6. We just put them in. And this is the square root of 16. Now, 16. That happens to be a perfect square. 4 times 4 is equal to 16. But it's also something I happen to have on my calculator. I think you might have it on your calculator. You might not have it on the calculator on the GRE because it's a four function calculator. This calculator happens to have a square root on it, but you might not. 16, you should recognize that as the square root of, uh, as 4 as the square root of that. And in any case, if you get a, if you had a, a multiple choice, uh, four would be one of them because it's the correct answer. So you wouldn't actually have to know that. You could just check some of the four squared, sixteen. Okay. Just an example. Now, here's a problem for you to do. It says if x is not equal to zero, then let this symbol. This is a spade from from a deck of cards. Spade x be defined by the spade x equals x minus one over x. And they say, what well, is the spade of negative 3? The reason why x can't equal 0 is because if x were equal to 0, then you'd take x minus 1 divided by 0. And 1 divided by 0, that's like undefined. It's an infinite quantity. So this would not work. You couldn't get a finite number if x were equal to 0. So what are you going to get when it's equal to negative 3? Well, why don't you see what you get? Uh, pause the video, and then... Uh, I'll do it, and we'll see how you've made out. Okay. Okay. This doesn't look very hard because if I want the spade of negative three, it's really just a matter of plugging it in to this idea: negative three minus one over negative three. And here you get a lot of negatives, but that can be simplified: negative three plus one third. At this point, you can see that the answers are expressed as fractions, so your calculator might not help you on this one. You might want to add these as fractions and put this over 3 to get a common denominator. Okay, that's probably the best way to do this. Negative 3 would be negative 9 over 3 as a fraction. And then with these over a common denominator, this would be negative 8 over 3, which happens to be an answer. You could have done this on your calculator. You would have got negative 2 and 2 thirds, or negative 2.667. But then you're going to have to look at these and find out which one is, is that equal to. And it would have worked. You could have done it that way, too. It probably might have taken only about the same amount of time. So I, I prefer, usually, not to go to the calculator right away. So, but either way is fine. Okay?